Hey guys, I'm going to work the machine a little bit today. Um, man, I love machine work. I love going slow. And, and that's something I just can't stress enough. You know, if we can't do something sitting still, if we can't get our horses to sit still, it's going to be hard to do it at a walk. It's even harder to trot and a lope and, and a run. And, and anytime I hear people talking about, well, my horse feels good on the runners, but he doesn't feel good at this or that, you know, that's coming back to a lack of control and control really comes down to consistency. You know, are you really spending the time? Um, man, I'm a big advocate of our horses knowing what we expect from them on the ground. Um, and, and by on the ground, what I mean is like, I should be able to set up a dummy and go rope this dummy and my horse not have any doubt and what I'm looking for right here. He knows exactly where he's supposed to be. He knows how to walk up there and pop it off and stand nice and quiet. And I'm not saying that's easy to do. It takes some homework, it takes some energy and some time and a, and a relationship to build with your horse. And you know, very much like what we do on the ground, I have you know, what I call a green zone and that's an area where I'm really confident. I feel like I can catch this dummy 100% of the time. You know, nobody's roping 100%, but I feel like I can catch it every single time I get there. And you know, my zone is a couple feet off the left hip of the steer and, and a few feet behind the dummy, that's where I'm comfortable. But what I've created in these horses' minds is, is a box, basically, and, and by a box, I'm not trying to put them in somewhere where they're claustrophobic. A until I ride perfect, I can't expect my horses to work perfect. But a big thing that I'm going for here is I want my horse to walk up there and kind of hit an imaginary wall where everything levels off, my horse is flat and he's smooth, he's relaxed, and then width-wise is the same thing. I want him to feel like there's an imaginary wall also known as my right leg, if he happens to work his way to the right of where I want to be and vice versa on the left. You know, if he's way over here, I want him to feel, hey, a little bit of pressure here, like, man, that's too wide. That's a hard spot for me. But here's a good spot. All the pressure's relieved. This is a position that I can rope the dummy. And so then what I'll do, if I can do that sitting still, then what I want to do is I'll, I'll walk to it and I'll head it, I'll walk, I'll trot to it and head it, I'll lope to it and head it, and then I'll actually go ahead and lope out of the box. So um, I'll make a shortcut here, but basically here I'm gonna trot to that same spot. I've got my rope above the horns. Up on my horse just a little bit right there. He was just a little free, but he wasn't planning on taking off. He was just raiding a little bit late. He was just dialing down a little bit slower than I wanted. <clears throat> I'll back him out of there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and put him on a left lead. I'm gonna lope him to that same spot. So I'm picking up my target. I want my horse to pick up his target. Whoa. Cover the horns, dally, pop it off. Everything's nice and relaxed. Here's a good position right here to do some work with your horse. Say your horse has been getting a little bit strong to the left right there and he's been going through your leg. Here's a great time to lift him up with your left leg and make him step up and across himself to the right. Not just sit on his butt and back there and roll back. Because a roll back is really getting those hind legs down, much like the duck. When a horse just starts feeling tight and quick on you, it's because he's got too much collection and he's coming over himself already. So I would want to pick that horse up and push him right behind the dummy off to the right. Then contrary to that, if your horse has been feeling really free, so about the time you're fixing a head, that horse starts to feel like he's wanting to charge through the cow, you can do the opposite of that. That'd be an opportunity to back your horse off a little bit, get him softer in the pole, and make him step across himself. Like, hey, there's the spot that I'm going to release. As we talked about in horsemanship, we train these horses, we build these horses, off the release, not just off the pressure. It's so much of the time that we think big spurs and big bits and, and a lot of excessive riding is going to build a better horse, but in actuality where we train these horses is by applying the pressure and releasing at the perfect time. They want to be in a stable, relaxed environment, just like this horse is relaxed right here. His face is relaxed, his body is relaxed. If I need an action, I'll apply a slight amount of pressure, and the moment that I start getting what I want, I'm gonna let off. I'm gonna go ahead and rope this dummy out of the box. And, uh, you know, everybody does this deal a little bit different. Some headers love setting the dummy out here straight away, dropping their horse, ride, 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 and pick up. Um, what I found, guys, for me personally, is setting my face in the opposite direction of the box over there to the left allows me a lot more time to ride and I can shape my horse and I can make a, a move to the left and control his shoulders also. And what I mean by controlling his shoulders is I don't want him to make this circle, this semicircle. I don't want him to make that by way of dropping his left shoulder, but I do want some shape. 
So I'm gonna sit here like I was scoring. I'm gonna see my imaginary start. I'm going to the middle of the box for me personally. Here I'll hit a trot and then I'm gonna hit a left lead. Now I see my target over my left shoulder, pick my rope up. I'm gonna swing through my target. Whoa. And I just talked to him. You could tell like right there, he got just a little bit lost and just a little bit strong on about the three quarter mark of that turn. Nothing wild, nothing crazy. He just wasn't 100% sure what I was gonna ask him to do next. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna just let him chill right here. I felt like this horse was just a little bit more narrow to the cow than what I was wanting, than, than ideal. So that's how I make the decision on which direction I'm gonna turn out of the stop. Um, I don't think this is going to be a make or break deal for your horsemanship, but be aware of that. When I ride a horse in the box, if a horse is just really insistent on turning one way, I'm gonna turn him the other way a lot, two out of three times the other way. And guys, this isn't about being rebellious or about arguing or picking fights with your horse. It's about keeping them nice and soft. Like I said, this horse was a little bit narrow right there and approached the cow on a little bit too narrow of, of a V like we were talking about where I set my handle up. So I turned him to the left when I brought him out of there. If he had been the other way, if he had been thinking about running a veer and being away from the cow, I would have probably made him step out the front and turn back to the right. So I'm gonna imagine, my imaginary cow's in there. I'm trying to be nice and calm with both hands. See my start, drop my horse out the middle of the box, a normal run out the middle, left lead. My horse is a little bit free, but I'm not mad. Like I want a horse thinking about getting to the cow. Nice and smooth through the stop, put it on the horn. Nice and relaxed right here. Pop it off nice and slow. I can't really ask my horse for that much more. You know, say your horse is having a, a problem with his finishing, you know, he's not wanting to face exactly like you like. You know, this is a great opportunity. Go ahead and create some shape in your horse right here. Maybe your right rein a little snug, create the shape that you're looking for across the arena. Now I'm notice how I'm gonna take my right leg from up by the front cinch in towing back to the back cinch. And I'm gonna ask him to move his back end around his front end. Once we get at least a half circle, then I'm gonna back him up. The reason I say at least a half circle is in the finish, I feel like horses that over finish, very seldom do, does anyone hold the flag on one that over finishes. But if a horse under finishes, a lot of times the flagger will get a half of holding that on you and he'll expect you to um, just keep facing and keep facing. So same thing, at least a half circle where I'm at least looking back at the cow or even to the right side of the cow in my finish. I'll go through this again. See my start, middle of the box, left lead, pick my rope up. More a guy does this, more confidence his horse gets in it, the better it's gonna be. Then when we start adding speed, we have something to go back to. There's a lot of good horses out there that never ended up being great because at low speeds, in other words, when you draw the best cow at the roping, that's when that horse costs you. There are a lot of horses that ended up getting a lot of recognition who may not have had the most athleticism or the most speed, but they were a horse when you drew the best cow, when you drew the loper at the rodeo and all you need to do is catch, that's when that horse shines. <clears throat> I wanna build all these horses, whether they're a superstar or just an average horse, I wanna build all these horses from the ground up. If I can't get in a good spot on a loose rein and sit here relaxed, roping this dummy, sitting perfectly still, it's gonna be hard for me to expect to have a ton of control when I'm riding this horse for all he's worth as fast as he can go down the arena. And then I wanna pick up the bridle reins and have him drag his tail, or I wanna ask him to step out the front nice and soft and, and handle a, a nice fresh steer. So I think it's so important that we start here and we work our way up to a walk, to a trot, to a lope, and then go in full speed.